um, I remember when I was out there with you, you told me, I'd, I'd asked you about, you know, hey, Pat, when was the last time you were in a fight? And you were talking, you told me a great story, man. I want you to re- kind of repeat it here is you're at a concert yep. and yeah, some guy decided, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, you already look kind of like, all right, that's the kind of guy. He, he's got the look, a look that says, <laughs> don't fuck with him. Um, but yeah, retell me that story and how you handled it. I, th- I think it's a great <laughs> for lessons learned for people out there. Well, so um, it was a Slayer concert, Slayer Lamb of God. So Lamb of God was on first, Slayer came nice. up next. I brought my wife with me, and I don't do anything anymore unless I'm um, like buying first class tickets or you know good seats. <laughs> yeah, you know I'm, I'm done with the nosebleed section. Uh, pl- plus, there's for the sake of security. You know, yeah. it's, 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 it, you're more secure that way. Cause there's more outs, you know, when I'm that close to stage, I've got to exit over there and exit over there and then two right behind me. And I'm not going to be caught in all of the muck. Mm. Um, so we're, we're enjoying the show and we're in, you know, we're in the first class section, you know, we're down right close to the stage and, uh, a party of drunkards kept coming down the aisle and you, you know they're coming from the nosebleeds and they kept messing with this security guard he's just some kid you know he's probably 21 mm-hmm. and he's about 120 pounds soaking wet with a shirt on that says security and he's got ray bands on and they kept messing with him he's on the gate so so that way nobody passes the gate you know into like the uh uh the the stage because we're just beyond the the vip section so he's blocking the vip section and um and they kept messing with him and i'm looking around at others because now i'm building i'm building assets because i'm about to intervene so Mm -hmm. i'm looking around and i can see guys going you know rolling their eyes and because he's disrupting this, this stuff and and uh so i tell him once i say hey get move back and and the security guard tells him hey push back that way and they do but they come back down um and he's in this kid's face i mean right in his face now i have to intervene Mm -hmm. so i i grab him just by his chest and right under his uh uh, uh, neck and i push him back i just give him a big shove and he falls backwards and he takes a couple steps backwards and he's with his three buds and i step into the aisle and I'm sweating my ass off. I got my shirt off. I mean, I've been headbanging. I've been, you know, like rocking. I do not want this show messed up for me. And they start approaching. They start closing the gap. And I go, ah, ah nope, 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 nope. I go into my hands up mode, my, yeah. uh, my, um, you know, non-threatening posture. And um, I said, nope, nope. And I even told him, I said, trust me, bro. You don't want any of this. Trust mm-hmm. me. I'm yelling it because it's loud. And he closes the gap and I, boom, one, two, and he fall. I mean, he fell faster than gravity. <laughs> you know, I mean, just <laughs> whoosh, sack of potatoes, boom. But I didn't knock him out. He got right back up, took a couple steps back, uh, got with his buds. And they, now there's a massive fight because <laughs> oh, all of these assets, I'm like, yeah, whoosh, whoosh. There's fists everywhere. Now I'm trying to break up the fight that I started. <laughs> I don't want these guys to get kicked out, you know? Right. So uh, a couple more fists were thrown and then all the security comes down and they're, you know, quickly interrogating us and everybody say, no, 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 he's good. He didn't start it. He had his hands up. These guys started it. And it was, it was over just like that. And they said, all right, just yeah, enjoy the show. That's awesome, man. <laughs> Who would have thought, you know, in our older years, you'd still have to face the idiots on the planet. And I think that's what people forget, right? They get a little older and they think, oh, I don't need to go to the gym. Oh, I don't need to do any of that stuff. I'm retired yeah. now. Yep. But it's, uh, it's really, I mean, threats are everywhere at any given time. And uh, that's one of the skills you covered in the book is hands up, right? Yep. Get in that mm-hmm. de-escalation mode um, and putting your hands up or whatever it is, you got to train to it, right? So let's yep. talk about it. You got your hands up means, hey, I'm, I don't want any trouble, but I'm ready to fight, right? Exactly. When I do that, boom, when I put the hands up, um, there's a light switch that goes off in my head. That yeah. means game on. If you close, if you close the gap, game on. Right. Um, I've made that as soon as I do this, boom, nope. And I do that. There's a decision has been made. Red light, green light. You. St- I am not going to approach. I am not going to. 
-hmm. I am not going to be the aggressor. I want to de-escalate if I can. And I am going to give you every opportunity not to get your ass kicked. Yeah. Every single one. But I've already got the advantage. My hands are up. Bah, 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 and I have liability now because people are seeing. So even if I did get punched out, I I'm an innocent victim. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. because I'm, I'm going, ah. Um, but as soon as they enter that zone, and and the and if you box a lot, spar a lot, you become very, very familiar with that zone because you've been punched in the face so many times. Yeah. So that zone becomes this this space of awareness where somebody enters it, that's your property. You own that real estate. And this is mine. This is my you just invaded my personal property, which is my space. This is property. I own this, this right. little chunk of land around me so i am going to defend it and i am going to be ferocious you know i'm going to strike with precision with uh um with spontaneity with aggressiveness and with lethality it's going to hurt really really bad uh and then you usually every time every time it's happened they all go everyone you know because you have to get ready for a number three or something like that or a, a knee to the chest or a clinch yeah. But every single guy's gone down with a one and a two. Boom, boom. Every single one of them. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's um, it's that Bruce Leeism of uh, I don't I'm paraphrasing. I don't fear the man who knows ten thousand things one way, but the man who knows one thing and can use it ten thousand ways. Right. But you know, that's been. I have probably five primary tools, and I work them all of the time, all of the time. Um, and I and I remember getting that lesson from my wrestling coach um in high school he said uh patrick if you practice a move a thousand times you'll be able to use it in every match mm -hmm. and mine was the um uh throwdown fireman's carry throwdown oh yeah and and, and it even <clears throat> had a backup if the guy sprawled i go into a dump <clears throat> mm. but when i was in my senior year of high school i got a takedown record and it was that move because in the summer I practiced that move at the uh, at the college with the college uh, wrestling team. So proof is in the pudding, you know. I mean, yeah. because now it's like almost a um, an intuitive level driven task because you've done it so many freaking times, you know. Right, right. Initially, you think about it, you think about it, think about it, cognitive thought until you don't have to think about it, and then it just becomes a subconscious level or intuitive level driven task. Yeah, and that's that's that muscle memory piece, right? Yep. I mean, you're mm -hmm. you're training. I, I get you get. I know you get asked the question all the time. So do I. What's the martial art I should do? What should I go? <laughs> where, where do I learn how to fight? What do? I, mm -hmm. And it's for me. I, I'm always telling people, like, look, it's it's not about the art as much as it is about the moves, and then picking the ones that you are good at and mastering them. Right? Yep. Mastering the basics is what makes you advanced. I think we've learned that being at national level commands. It's not that we are being taught any kind of special ninja shit. We just master the basics, you know, and you master those to the point where they become muscle memory. And all of a sudden now, yeah, you kind of look like a ninja. You act like a ninja. Right. But it's not because you were taught some secret stuff. It's because you right. just broke down the basics and made them uh, in just part of you. And now you can pull them off at any given time regardless of the threat. You're listening to Can You Survive This Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Please make sure to subscribe, rate, and share on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your favorite shows.